I just love to tinker, I love to fix things. That's my passion, I guess. Sure, the PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, they're great, but back in the olden days, there was another king of the arcade, the pinball machine. And thanks to a local collector and repairman, that legacy continues. Herb, thank you so much for letting us come to your workshop. This is like Santa's workshop for gamers. Yes, it sure is. Everybody loves a pinball machine. Let's talk about the history of pinball machines because at one point they're actually illegal. How did this all begin? Well, pinball machines started off early in Chicago when they were a gambling machine and they were basically used by the mob. What? Yeah, the mob. Uh, what you would do, you would play your game of pinball and if you got a high enough score, you would win a cigarette or you could win some small little prize. And they became illegal because that was considered gambling. Then they moved up to you actually had a score on the machine and you'd play the game and you would get an actual score. Uh, it was usually lit up by light bulbs and the little light would go behind 100,000 points and it would light up. Then the generations changed and they became electromechanical. You actually had score reels, you could actually see your scores. Uh, over time, of course, electronics came into play. Digital scoring, computerized, and, and they just moved up from there. Uh, today, the generations, they continue. As computers get better and better, the pinballs become more computerized. Until today, you have a modern pinball. So right now, I want to look at a pinball machine you're working on right now, an older one that you're making modern. How are you doing this? Well, what we're doing to this machine is we're replacing all the old incandescent light bulbs with LED lighting. Uh, it's much more intense, and it brings out a really lot more of the color. So we have the Captain Fantastic Pinball Machine. Or can you show us how these things work on the inside? Well, sure. Uh, we've already removed the glass, so it's easy to open up. But you just lift it up. Basically, what we've got here is a, an antique computer right in here. This device is what you have as the computer of the day. Nowadays, you can buy any part you need for a pinball machine. But 20 years ago, they were impossible to get. Today, you can buy them all. This is your flipper device. When you push on the button, it activates the arm and the flipper flips. Uh, basically, it's a simple device. When we're talking about taking an old pinball machine and making it modern, probably the best example in your shop is the fire pinball machine. Yes, I, I happen to have two of them in the shop right now. One has got the new LED lighting and one has still got the old incandescent. When you take a look, you can compare them. It, it's just like night and day when you look at the two machines. Why do you think that pinball machines are still popular and people still love them? Well, in a lot of cases, I think it's the baby boomers still. Uh, back when the boomers were around, there were no such things as arcade games, and everybody went to, say, Playland at Winnipeg Beach, for example, and played the old claw machines and the old crane machines, pinballs, and they remember that from their past. Uh, a lot of university students played pinball. A lot of lawyers, they love the old pinball. They all say to me, oh, I remember that when I was studying in school. I want that specific machine. It's good, you can work off your <laughs> inhibitions, all your problems, by just giving the machine a little bit of a shake and getting some of your frustrations out onto the machine rather than inside of you. Herb, this was a real treat. Thanks for letting us come to your workshop. But before I let you go, one last question. Sure. Got any quarters? I sure do. Help yes! Yourself. All right, had to do some gaming. Yes, yes, good, good. All right. Oh, oh!